I don't know if I, I'm just going to start talking because we're running a little bit behind. My name is Jackie. Um, I'm one of the creators of Prelude. I'm one of the creators of Prelude, and uh, this is uh, my play that you're going to see. Um, I wanted to let you all know that you are um, in, uh, encouraged to color throughout the performance or stop as you like. Um, and also to let you know that in the spirit of uh, this being a works in progress festival, um, um, I finished writing this current draft of the play yesterday. I read through it with three actors and I sent them changes this morning. So this is half performance, half open rehearsal, and thank you so much for being here. Um, there's a, a, a these, these color pages, just for your information, they exist on the internet. I, I didn't draw them, <laughs> I found them, and they all have um, a Tumblr or a, a Tumblr um, address at the bottom. Um, that's my Tumblr, and if you would like to go to it after the show, um, you can leave comments about what you thought about it on my Tumblr account. I would really appreciate any feedback that you care to give me, anonymous or not. Um, and oh, let me please present uh, Karen Briscoe, Kate Skelsa, and Lisa Joyce, who will be performing in this performance slash open rehearsal. Thank you so much for being here. I'll run away now. <laughs> And she wanted some jeans, and she goes to like the new jeans, and oh, she get them because they're awesome and make your booty pop kind of. 
You can get them online, I think. Or I can get some and bring them home with me on Thanksgiving. Do you want me to, maybe? I don't know. You have to let me know soon, because they'll sell out. Oh, so this lady came in, and she wanted the new jeans, and she was like, okay. She was kind of big. I mean, she wasn't like a beast or anything. She was just big, kind of. But so Patrick is like, can I get you those? You know who Patrick is. I've told you about Patrick a million times. Okay. So Patrick was like, can I get you those in a larger size? But he didn't even mean it like mean. He actually for real meant it. Like, hello, lady, who I don't know at all, and I'm not being nice, like, at all, at all. You're about to try on a pair of jeans that won't actually fit you, and that's going to make you feel shitty. So let's just avoid that, shall we? But obviously, the lady was like, excuse me? And Patrick was like, what? And the lady was like, are you calling me fat? And Patrick's like, um, no. And then the lady's like, who is your manager? And so Patrick was like, look, bitch. Well, I mean, he didn't say look, bitch, but you know, I know what I mean. He was like, look, bitch. He was like, I'm just trying to help, ma'am. I know these jeans, they run small. And they do run small. The re- jeans would run super small. <laughs> the lady's like, I should have bought them online, so I wouldn't have to do sales people. Oh, God, you... Can you believe she said that like that? What were all of us standing there? So rude. And Patrick was like, I'm sorry that you're finding my service unsatisfactory. We really strive to create a unique retail experience for our customers. <laughs> like, sounding really polite, but everyone can tell that what he meant was like, Fuck you, bitch. Fuck you and your whole fucking family. <laughs> and then the lady was like, you're so rude. I can't believe you talked to me that way. <laughs> I'm gonna get you fired, bitchy little man. And you could just tell that she was like, I mean, she didn't say anything wrong, but just her tone and like her mom hair and t-shirt, you could just tell that she was like super homophobic, you know? Which is like unacceptable, actually. So we were all like, bitch. But Kathy was like, Cool and like smiling and like takes the jeans away from her like just takes them and folds them and is like have a nice day and the homophobic lady is walking around the store looking for Priya or something to be like manager and Patrick's like folding and like quietly like totally loud enough for everybody to hear to me he's like I didn't think she'd be able to afford those jeans anyway and oh my god it was like oh my god dying she was like she was like so mad she was dead. And the lady <laughs> turns around like, and her face was like, Grr, and she was like, Rah. and she like grabs the jeans, like the whole stack, like the whole stack of jeans, and she like takes it to the register, and she buys like all of them, like credit card, eager, doesn't say a word, and like won't let us fold them or anything, and she buys all of them, and then looks at Patrick, and hmm, looks at Patrick like, hmm, and walks right at the store, and everyone was like, whoa. <laughs> about it like a lot <laughs> <laughs> and that's like sad and everything but 
also like a million years ago. <laughs> and she has like a brother in like a lab or something, like a dog that's good with little kids. And she's like so bored, like to the point of like criminal insanity, which sucks kind of because she hates me. Like actually, like I give her hives. Like I've seen them sometimes. Like she looks at me and gets these splashes on her neck and because she hates me so much. And she has nothing to think about really. So it's like she just thinks about how much I suck and like, filled with rage that actually changes the chemistry of like her brain and she gets hives. And so like she spends all the time thinking about how to like literally like smoke me from the earth. <laughs> but in like third grade before her fucking aunt died, we were like actually friends kind of. I mean I went to her house like five times. She has two beds in her bedroom even though it's just her and her mom always changes both sets of sheets even though she just sleeps in one bed because like why would she sleep in the other bed? And she thought that was really pointless of her mom to do, she told me. And there was one time when she was making me cut my hair in the bathroom at school and there was kind of a crowd of girls and I was kind of freaked out. I mean whatever, I was crying or whatever and really afraid and also really really angry and couldn't think and I just wanted her to like feel shame or something worse i guess i don't know but also i guess i'm weird and i see weird stuff so whatever i was like do you still have those beds and she was like what <laughs> because it was like really weird like now i'm like why did i say that and she like freaked out like she was like oh my god you're obsessed with me and like oh my god you're stalking me and like oh my god you're a lesbian and like sneaking into her room and like watching her sleep and like masturbating which was like terrible and then somehow I was like, you can tell who's a lesbian because their vagina smells bad because someone's mom's a lesbian and she smells bad even though it's like flawed reasoning because like Ellen seems like she smells fine but that's just at the point because people say like, the whole thing is that when it smells weird people say it's me. Like even in class, like if someone farts or something, some girl will tell me to cross my legs. And that sucks. Kind of a lot. And like everyone hates me, which should be like interesting. <laughs> but it's like I want to get the fuck out. I want to like get on a fucking wagon, like a covered wagon, and like go out west, but to like wherever there's nothing, you know, like ford a fucking river and shoot a buffalo and eat them and wear their skins and have like dumbass names and die of dysentery. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously though, it's so great thinking about being like um, and having that be like what, what is it? Not touchable not impregnable, or whatever it is, but I think those are sexy. I do, I swear. <laughs> I do though, and it's not just you. I swear to God, like every single day, I see someone who I would shoot in the face, easily. <laughs> I would shoot them or run away. Because <laughs> doing whatever you want is sexy. I remember when I was little and I first heard about homeless people and I thought it was so sad that I cried that people don't have houses to live in and people to take care of them and they never get to dress, get dressed up and look nice and feel good about themselves. I remember you and me talked about it for a really long time. Do you remember? I don't remember. I guess we were going to take a field trip to a museum and so my mom went to learn me or something. Holly, I don't remember learning about homeless people. Ooh, you remember though because I told you that there were homeless people and you didn't believe me at first. Nope. I cried about the homeless people, but I don't remember seeing any. I just thought that it was so sad that they never got anything new. Why are we talking about this? I hate feeling bad about things. Well, welcome to my world. College is like only talking about things that make you feel bad all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. You'll learn to like it. Probably not. Probably next year. Probably not. Anyway, just tell Pip about the homeless people. I bet she doesn't know about them really. Yeah, I guess. Just be like, if you don't go to school, you become a homeless person and you'll never get anything new in your life. <laughs> yeah, but girls who go to school want to kill her and being dead is worse than being homeless. Okay, well, she has to go to school. Well, yeah. She could go to another school. She kind of can't. Why? Because there kind of aren't any more schools. <laughs> The first thing you need to do is to take some ibuprofen and get some ice cream. And then you need to get some vitamin. You just soak a clean cut and swab of vitamin and hold it on there for like five minutes. And then you're ready for your first concealer. It should be like thick and pretty dry. 
I like the Makeup Forever HD Concealer. You use your concealer brush, that's the small pointy one, so you can really get in there, dabbing with the brush, and not brushing with the brush, you know? Okay, and then you just tap it with your finger to set it, and then you'll need your green concealer corrector to counteract redness. I like Physicians Formula, but you can probably use Maybelline this one. Use more than you think you need the green, and then maybe you'll need the white concealer corrector. Again, maybe one is fine for you, and you can put that underneath it to like counteract the slight shadow it creates from being raised off your face, you know? So that it blends better. Then cover with the foundation you'll be using on the rest of your face. I don't know what brand you use, but and if you're not sure which foundation is the best for your face, I have a video for that. But anyway, foundation and then loose powder, and that's it. I don't know if I use Fizine, thick concealer, green concealer, green corrector, white corrector, foundation powder, and I have a video of everything I just told you, where I show girls how to do it step by step. It's really easy. Hit. Hit. Yeah? It's not hard. Don't get scared. I'm not scared. People think all this stuff is really scary and intimidating, and I'm trying to tell girls that it's not. You can look however you want to look. Okay. <laughs> Girls like you think they're stuck with what they've got. They don't realize how many options they have. Yeah, I have like a scar on my face, and I do normally cover it with makeup, but I didn't today. It's really light. Can you see it? It's really light. Anyway, <laughs> I got it when I was little with my friend Polly, and we just go to this fence that was like two streets over from our street, and we'd like sit in someone else's yard on the ground, like right in front of the fence, and we'd like pick a picket. And we would like pretend that the picket was like our boyfriend and like practice saying I love you. <laughs> and like staring at it and, and saying I love you for like hours. <laughs> and so one day, I don't know why, it was totally Polly's idea. She's such a little slut actually. And so one day we were like sitting staring at the fence and Polly was like, we should practice kissing the fence. And she was, was like, what? And she's like, you don't want to be a bad kisser because then boys won't like you. And I was like, I'm not. And she was like, prove it. And so we were sitting there kissing the fence. And it was so funny because it was like, I'm sitting there with my eyes like tight, like clenched eyes and like everything I have. I'm like, mommy is fence. Like, so hard. He loves me. And I'm the most important thing in the world to this fence. And I'm like, Really into it, like I'm concentrating and like feeling it and like kissing it, and like the fence is kissing me back, and I'm like, mmm, pain, I love you, mmm, splinters, mm, <laughs> and then like this dog runs up the fence and bites Polly in the face, and like, <laughs> I didn't see it, like my eyes were closed, I heard it, and there'd never been a dog there before, but it was like there, and it was like Polly was like totally silent, and there was blood on her forehead, like so much and the dog was barking and totally scary and behind the fence was fine but I put my sleeve like I, I balled it up and I like put it on Polly's forehead and her eyes were red and she must have been crying but she didn't say anything and we sat there for a little while I think and like my hand in my sleeve like on her forehead like staring kind of and it was like and I took like my hand and my sleeve away and it was this small like a deep little hole in her forehead kind of but like small actually, except it was in her forehead and I could see white at the bottom of it for like a second before the hole filled up with blood again and started coming out again. And it was cool. <laughs> because like, I thought that if I become a doctor, then that would be a story I would tell people about when people ask me why I'm like <laughs> Oh, and the dog scratched me too, like with his paw or paw or whatever, like through the fence in the face, but I didn't even notice it. Like, it wasn't terrible or anything. Did you know that slaves had to pee and shit and have their periods all on top of each other and they never got up? They had to lay down for months? Um, Isn't that terrible? Yeah. And did you know that girls now like to pee on each other and poop on each other and eat each other's pee and poop um, for, like, sex? Yeah. <laughs> and did you know that if you're stuck at sea, you should drink your own pee instead of drinking seawater? Because you'll die faster if you drink <coughs> seawater. Okay. And did you know that if you pee on a pile of straw and let it sit for a long time, it turns explosive and you can make a bomb? <laughs> <laughs> That's not true, though. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Look it up. Okay, fine. Why do you do that, then? If I wanted to kill people, I would have made a pee bomb that might not work and then get in trouble. <laughs> you shouldn't talk about that stuff. Why? Because. Because why? Because that's weird, and you're weird, and you need to figure out how to make other people not hate you. <laughs> you're not a little kid anymore, you know? 
thing at night, and this boy and his brother were like just chilling, like skateboarding or something, and one of these bitchy girls was like, sell me some drugs, and the boy was like, I don't have drugs, and she was like, get some, and his brother was like, okay, and then he went home and got like a baggie and like put like comet in it. <laughs> no, but like comet, like powder <laughs> from under the sink. And they were like, hey bitch, here's some meth. And the bitchy girl snorted it and just like waved her arms in circles like this and was like, whee, for like 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my god, so what if we're the dumb bitch in this story? <laughs> like, what if we die? Or what if we, like, look really dumb? Um, what? Hmm. You can't do that. Um, no, you can't. No, you're not. Ice cream in the coffee and like stir it. It is really good. 